Okay. So I figured I'd do a review on a rangefinder. It's the only one I have at the moment. Um, it's a Zeiss PR Zeiss Victory PRF eight by oh, thirty two or something like that. There's the front battery compartment. Um, send receive or receive send. What it, I don't know which which is which. As far as that goes, um, it does indicate that it is made in Japan. Back there. Uh, which is always a good indication of quality, especially with electronics. Um, it's got a, uh, a diopter and then focus. Um, as far as tech goes, it's supposed to be 1,300 yards, but they did go way beyond that. Um, the optics in it are fantastic. You'd expect that from Zeiss. Um, the tech in it, though, isn't as good as some of the other ones. Like some of them. You know, this will do meters and yards, and it's got some other settings and stuff. I really haven't messed around with it because I just, you know, I've got my dope, and then I'm usually shooting level ground. So, uh, you know, a, a degree here and there is really not going to make that big of a difference. I mean, I don't really get too far out very often. Um, but do meters and yards. Got some, some settings you can mess with. But it doesn't have, like, where you can put your load data in there. And it gives you your MRAD, your your minute of elevation. Um, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't do even inches or anything. I don't think. Um, like I said, I haven't really read into it a lot because I, you know, I push this button, and I get my I get my distance, and you know, I've already got my I've already got my known data. <coughs> um, because your environmentals are going to play more into all that other stuff. Um, but uh, but the reticle on it's pretty good. The you know, other than not having the tech, <coughs> which I don't really find that big of a deal, but some people want that all that crap on it. Um, the the beam divergence is actually quite large. Um, I find that uh, it's fast. So if you're inside, say 800 yards, you know, 700 yards, then it's it's fast. There's no problem. The beam divergence isn't that great at that range. But once you start getting like you know, to in the you know stupid ranges, you know, thousand plus, you know, eleven hundred, twelve hundred. Um, then your beam divergence actually gets so big, and your beam divergence means so if um, it's it's measured and it, it's it's an angular measurement as well. So um, it may be this much at a hundred, right? But at a thousand, it's going to be ten times that. So it's going to be you know it's going to be much much bigger. Um, so the further out you get, the harder it is to actually get a reading on what you're, what you're actually trying to get a reading on. Um, and that's kind of a big gripe with it. But other than that, like if you're, um, if you got trees, I think I've done trees to like 1150, um, road signs to like 1400, buildings to 1400. Um, I got a church that's 13. 1348 from the from the um, front porch and uh, you know it's across like uh, a, you know a cornfield a farm field and um, you know and it's dead on every time and I got you know a stop sign pretty much right next to it and stuff so I know it's it's getting pretty good it's pretty accurate um, as far as I can tell and I've done it with the GPS and like I said as far as I can tell it's, it's pretty accurate um, I got it on a military promo um, and I haven't taken it anywhere other than to the range and hunting and stuff, but it's, you know, it's quite large. I mean, there, you know, if you, if you put your hands on like the, uh, the Vortex rangefinder, which actually is really, really good value. Um, the Vortex is like that big. It's way, it's wicked small. It's, it's, it's a neat little package. Um, but it won't, it's not nearly as fast as this. The optics aren't even remotely comparable and you can't get the distance you can get with this um but you pay for it in this you know gigantic pa well, not giant package it's probably about the same as you know if you held it on its side like that about the same as the leica maybe a little bit bigger the leicas are supposed to be a little bit better but they're a little bit more expensive the squirrel skis are i guess and they're all in kind of that same tier 
you know, before you started getting into, like, the Terrapins and the Vetronix and stuff like that, that, um, uh, you know, you, you're really, the Zeiss, the Leica, and the Swaro are all pretty much equal across the board. Um, I've had a loophole, and it was crap. <coughs> um, I had a couple other ones, they were, in my opinion, they were all junk. The, the, the Vortex is quite good. Um, especially for what you can get them used and stuff. And they got a lifetime warranty. It's the only one out there that's got a lifetime warranty. Um, I'm super interested in the the six hour kilo, but I recently went to the six hour pro shop and honestly the guys didn't know anything of what they were talking about and they were kind of douchey. So, I don't know. I'll probably still end up picking one up. You know, I think they're like 400 bucks. But, uh, and they're supposed to be insane fast in range and, you know, the beam divergence is supposed to be really small and, and apparently they did it right. So even though they're kind of douchebags, I'll still probably buy one. Um, but yeah, so there's that. If you're in the market, you find one used, like I've seen them used for like sub 500, wicked good value for that money. So that's less than what I paid. But, um, but they will get you out to range. Would, um... Or shoot milk jugs at 1250 and range them with this. So, good value.